Hello, amateurs, and welcome back to our Six Nations series. And I'm going to be with you throughout the championship. So make sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Now, the championship kicked off this weekend, just gone. And whoa, what a start we had. Three incredible games, all very, very different. And today I'm going to be looking at what I think the Scotland team selection is going to be to face France following on from their win in Wales, where they broke a 22-year hoodoo of not winning in Cardiff in that remarkable game at the weekend. I mean, first half, amazing for Scotland. Second half, not so much. We did a full re review of it, Alco and I, which uh, you can see. I'll link it just up there. Go and check that one out. We get quite animated throughout that episode as we dive into everything that went on. So much sort of psychology, sports psychology in there. Okay, moving on to this coming weekend, though, for Scotland, who are playing France themselves off the back of a horrendous performance against Ireland. And I'm going to start with the players here in the forwards that I think will keep their spot from the weekend just gone. So the front row all went well. Schumann scored a try. Turner, incredible tackling from uh, George Turner, he thumps people. He's uh, very impressive. And Fagerson, a very, very solid job on the tight head. Richie Gray is out. Bicep injury from the weekend just gone. And I think from what I read, it's likely he might miss the entire rest of the championship, which is a huge loss for Scotland. Uh, but Cummins, big and powerful in the second row. Next to him, did a great job, and he'll keep his spot along with Matt Fagerson, who, again, just very typically rambunctious and physical, especially in that first half when Scotland was so physically dominant, it was almost embarrassing. OK, uh, should also say, sorry, Luke Crosby is likely to be out with a shoulder injury. It's, it's one of those where it's probably going to take some time to settle down before they really know how long he'll be out for. Uh, but it's likely he'll miss this week, uh, possibly back f further on in the championship after that. And of the players that played, Jamie Ritchie at seven, he did OK. Like, I just don't really remember him having too much of an impact on the game. So not a bad performance, but you'll, you'll see why he's not selected when we go on to the next screen. Uh, and this hasn't been confirmed, but I think... Rory Dyer was close to being fit last weekend, so I'm going to assume he's fit this weekend. And if he is, as a vice captain, I feel like he has to come into the side. So Dyer will come in at seven, and you'll see there I've moved Fagus into six and Dempsey to eight. This is really a nod to France and the amount of power they have. These two guys are big, powerful players, and I think Scotland are going to need that. And they're also bolstered by the return of Grant Gilchrist back from suspension to take over from Richie Gray in the second row, which, you know, that looks like a very strong Scotland pack to me. And I think they'll, this will be a huge contest against France at the weekend. OK, let's move on to the backs. And again, we're going to start with the players I think will keep their shirts from last weekend. And that is absolutely all of them. I thought they did really well. Um, ben White was fast and efficient at the breakdown. Russell, just very typical. Van der Merwe finishing supremely well, particularly his second try. Tuopoloto and Jones are powerful, but also plenty of guile in the centre there. I thought they went well. Carl Stain, relatively quiet, I'd say, on the wing, but but did fine. And Carl Rowe was very good at fullback. I thought he did well every time he carried the ball, and I thought his kicking, in particular, was excellent and contributed a lot to a strong Scottish kicking performance. We we'll believe Blair Kinghorn is still out injured. Uh, otherwise, he would potentially have come back in at fullback. He is that classy, in my opinion. But I am going to assume, again, it's not confirmed, but I'm going to assume that he is out injured. So let's move on to the bench. And it's very similar. Uh, I thought Ashburn and Hepburn both did well coming off the bench. I thought Miller Mills did well as well. Actually, I thought he had a very solid performance for his debut cap. However, again, this is not confirmed, but I believe WP Nell may well return. And I think he'll get picked for his experience and his ability to just nail down that scrum in the final 
final chapters of this game, although is he past his best a little bit? Maybe. It'll be a big test for him this coming this coming weekend if he does get back and fit. Skinner, the perennial number 19, wearer. Uh, big Jamie Ritchie on the bench. Uh, like I said, not a bad performance last weekend, I don't think, but picking on uh, reputation and on size for this France game. And again, Horn, Healy and Redpath on the bench all did just fine and no reason to change them. But what do you think? What do you think? Is this the Scottish team that you think will be selected? Have I got anything wrong? Like, I keep up with it as best I can, but is there somebody that's been suspended or that's definitely injured that I've missed? Let me know in the comments down below. And most importantly, do you think this team can beat France at the weekend? Again, let me know down below in the comments and I'll join you there for a conversation. Give this video a thumbs up if you don't mind and hit subscribe to make sure you don't miss on any future episodes uh you can subscribe there watch that one next and don't forget to get out and play